Hi everyone, my name's Aoife and I'm a public health nurse based here in Wexford. I'm here today to talk about the nine months developmental assessment. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, many of you have not received an appointment for your baby's nine month developmental assessment this year or last year. So this is a great opportunity for the public health nursing team to share some important information with you regarding your baby's milestones and development. Lots of you sent in questions via the library, so thank you very much for those. Those questions are going to guide today's talk and hopefully I'll answer them all throughout the course of it. This talk isn't intended to replace your baby's developmental assessment. So if you have any questions or concerns, you can contact your local public health nurse or GP. If you're not sure who your local public health nurse is, you can contact our secretary, Molly, in the nursing office on 053 91 23522. Before we start to talk about the developmental assessment itself, it's just important to say that all babies are different and every baby will achieve certain milestones at different times. It can be really easy to compare your baby to other babies, particularly to family members or friends, but just try to remember that there's a wide range of ages at which it's appropriate for your child to hit their milestones and what's important is how they're developing overall. If your baby's premature, they may reach certain milestones at different times and their development might be assessed at different times, but your local public health nurse will let you know about this. So at the nine-month developmental assessment, what your public health nurse will be looking at in terms of milestones will be in relation to your baby's communication and language, their motor skills, their cognitive skills, their social and emotional skills. We always then do a um, physical assessment of your baby and we talk about a wide range of health promotion topics, uh, ranging from diet to sleep, play, safety, anything that comes, comes up really. Um, so uh, the mychild.ie books and um, the website mychild.ie uh, have loads of information and actually have lots of information about developmental assessments and milestones so there's something that you can check out yourselves <coughs> excuse me so we might talk about uh, motor skills first so what does motor skills mean so simply put motor skills means how your baby uses their muscles to move okay so um, at nine months old we would expect that your baby will be rolling so they'll be able to roll from front to back and back to front um, they will be able to sit up without support so um, they will be able to sit up without you holding on to them or without falling over too much. Uh, while sitting up they should be able to twist around now and they should be able to lean forward and like pick up a toy without support at this stage as well. You'll definitely have noticed that your baby's on the move at this stage so um, they will be flying around the floor in some shape or form and that's different for every baby so some babies are at this stage are rolling around, they're wriggling around and they might be attempting to crawl. So attempting and crawl can look like lots of things. So it can look like um, your baby pushing themselves backwards. It can look like your baby um, using the, their forearms to pull themselves forward or commando crawling. You might have noticed that your baby has gotten up to all fours with their bottom in the air and is rocking back and forward. And these are all attempts to crawl. Of course, some babies are crawling at this stage um, and then other babies never crawl. So some babies for, prefer to scoot around on their bottoms. And once your, your baby is developing well in every other area, this is absolutely fine. Also at this stage, your baby will be able to support weight through their legs. So if you're holding onto their hands, um, they'll be able to stand up and often they love standing on your knee. They'll bounce up and down and they'll often do that for hours. They get great entertainment out of that. Uh, in terms of their fine motor skills then, They'll be able to grasp an object in their hand um, and they'll be able to pass an object from one hand to another. They'll also start to use what we call a pincer movement, so using a finger and a thumb to pick up small items, so to pick up an item like this block. And what you'll have noticed as well is that your baby will now be able to place items down rather than just dropping them. Uh, there are many ways in which you can encourage your baby's motor skills um, and a great way to do this is to make it fun and make it to do with play. So uh, get down on the floor with your baby, pop them on their tummy. Tummy time is still really important at this stage for um, developing their core muscles um, and uh, put little items just outside of their reach <clears throat> and this will encourage them to crawl because they'll have to reach and move to get the items. Uh, if your baby's sitting you can put a little ball between their legs and you can start rolling it to them and they'll start uh, playing and returning the gesture as well. Play is really important for developing your baby's cognitive skills. So at nine months old, your baby will enjoy exploring toys by uh, putting them in their mouths. Everything goes in the mouth at this stage and they love to drop them and bang them and hit them together. 
you don't need a whole lot of toys for your baby at this stage but some ideas for toys that are good for their development um, and that they will enjoy are noisy toys so toys that rattle um, and shake toys that have different textures so that have a rough side and a smooth side um, some uh, blocks that stack little small bricks like these or bigger bricks like these that stack on top of each other are great um, small little soft balls that they can roll and push around the floor are great as well um, so some uh, shape sorters like this kind of thing are uh, lovely for your baby as well they really enjoy those sorts of things um, and books are lovely as well so books like these that have nice big thick pages they'll probably try to eat them more than anything else but that have nice bright colorful um, pictures maybe like farm animals or faces are lovely as well uh, by about 10 months old um, what your baby should start to do is uh, look for an item if you hide it so say if you hide a little brick like this and um, if you put it under a blanket or under a bowl and your baby sees you do it they should look for that they should try and remove the item to find it so that's something that you can look out for as well at this stage as well about nine months your baby is getting really interested in the people and surroundings around them and they're going to start to imitate gestures so they'll start to do things uh, like clap hands or all gone if you repeat all gone enough you'll start to see that your baby will use their hands to do the gestures and this can be really fun as well in terms of baby's social and emotional um, development then this is often the stage where your baby will start to show shyness or separation anxiety um, and this is it's really natural that your baby will prefer their parent or regular caregiver um, and uh, this doesn't mean that they're spoiled and it actually can be a sign of good attachment they'll they'll often get quite distressed um, when they have to leave you but this is all really normal uh, this is often the time when you're starting to uh, maybe introduce your baby to some form of childcare so a good idea can be to schedule a few short visits before your baby's first day there that they get used to the environment with you there and your baby over time will just gradually learn that when you leave them that you come back and they'll be happier with this over time as well. We did have a question from a parent Ian about um, their concern that their baby was missing out on social interaction um, due to Covid restrictions. So for small babies the most important social interactions are those with their parents and their regular care caregivers um, because it's from you that they learn their um, their social skills so as long as your baby has you know a really loving and secure um, relationship with you um, and gets plenty of interaction then they will be absolutely fine this is often the stage as well that your baby will start to express themselves um, and uh, their little personalities come through and they'll, all, they'll often start to express themselves uh, quite strongly, you'll have learned this, um, so whether they're happy or sad they'll let you know quite firmly, so if they're happy they'll be smiling away and they'll laugh their heads off and then equally if they're sad they'll let you know about this in no uncertain terms, so if they're not happy about something that you're doing it could be something very simple, so you might be trying to put on their coat, you might be wanting them to go for a nap or get in their book and they can often get really upset quite quickly and they'll shout and let you know they're annoyed and they can get quite stiff and throw back their heads and you'll be glad to know this is all a very normal part of development at this stage um, they love attention at this stage and they'll shout and cry to get it with familiar people then they will start to interact really well so they'll start to show you toys or they might offer you food um, and they'll start to play little games so they'll start to imitate gestures as we said earlier but they'll also start to you know play with games um, to to, to play clap handies, play peekaboo, things like that. So you can encourage your baby's social and emotional skills by just having a really loving um, environment with them, showing them lots of love and affection, lots of cuddles and kisses, reading stories, um, singing rhymes with them, um, and giving them lots of eye contact when you are feeding them. And this will all provide your baby with a safe and secure environment um, in which to develop. Reading to your baby is a lovely way, a lovely easy activity um, that can help to build a strong and loving relationship. Um, it doesn't matter if you're not a great reader yourself, just hearing your voice is very comforting for your baby. Um, so picture books like these, nice colourful books um, are lovely with nice pictures so you can sit your baby up on your knee and very soon they'll be helping you to turn the pages. Um, and this is a great way of getting siblings involved as well. Um, so a, a routine of reading books and and singing nursery rhymes is great for helping develop your baby's language and communication skills as well. So in terms of um, communication skills at this stage, your baby is probably very vocal. Um, they will be babbling and they will be um, 
putting together long strings of sounds so nonsensical sounds at this stage um, they will often come out with their first words around now which tend to be mama or dada and um, they will be able to respond to their name and they will also understand words like no and bye bye um, we've already said that they'll start to imitate gestures at this stage and they'll start to imitate sounds like if you cough <coughs> you start to notice the baby imitating you as well which can be quite funny too um, picture books are great for helping to teach your baby words so books like the that have nice simple pictures so chair bowl and um, ball things like that um, and nursery rhymes and songs are also great ways of encouraging your baby's communication skills so we've covered all your baby's major milestones at this stage um, and another big topic that we would usually spend a lot of time on uh, would be diet. So we've had loads of questions come in on this as well. Uh, so at nine months old your baby is um, well established on solid meals and um, they're having three meals a day plus their formula or breast feeds. So at this stage they still need about 600 mils of uh, formula milk a day which is 21 ounces and they'll still breastfeed on demand. Um, at this stage there's no need to move on to uh, follow on for formula or a number two formula your baby can stay on their first infant milk until they're one year old when you're going to switch to cow's milk um, if your baby's taking less than 300 mils of formula per day or if they're exclusively fresh breastfed they do need a vitamin d supplement until they are one year old so um, with your baby's diet they will have moved on at this stage from very runny purees to thicker purees and onto mashed and finger foods. So giving your baby lumpier foods um, is really good in terms of helping their chewing muscles develop and also their speech development and it can actually um, broaden your baby's palate and, and um, encourage them to eat more foods, more variety of foods in later childhood as well. And finger foods are great for encouraging your baby's hand-eye coordination. So um, like if you're sitting them up in their high chair they might have little bits of uh, grated cheese or you might give them bits of cooked carrot um, and they'll spend ages picking them up and putting them into their mouth so it can buy you some time as well while you're trying to get something done um, this booklet here actually is great uh, feeding your baby and um, you might have got this from your public health nurse already and if you haven't you can ring her um, to get it or else uh, healthpromotion.ie is where this can be downloaded from and that has lots of other information leaflets as well so this has um, great sections has lots of lovely recipes it has a lovely section on uh, finger foods um, and it has some lovely meal planners and ideas for meals as well because often you can get stuck in a rush um, about what to give your baby. Um, so just some tips in terms of uh, feeding your baby. Um, try to, like this is a really messy stage and it's a really fun stage so try not to be too stressed out about it. Um, turn off the TV, minimise distractions as much as you can because you can, your baby just gets distracted easily and that can lead to more stress. Try and do it at a time when you are not uh, too busy either okay getting um, your baby eating as part of the family is a great idea because like you know having your baby sitting up at the kitchen table is where they should be because they learn uh, good eating habits around food from watching you eat um, and also making family meals and um, so not having to make you know a different meal for your baby and you can help to minimize the stress on you as well and most meals can be made baby friendly by um, reducing the salt and sugar content and maybe making some homemade sauces and um, so that can be really nice as well um, you don't really need to buy a whole lot of of, uh, special foods for your baby at this stage uh, regular cereals and porridge are fine because I know we had a question in about that um, uh, a sippy cup of cool boiled water is a good idea to introduce with meals at this stage as well um, I know that we had um, a question in about iron and I was actually really glad that we did because iron is really important, really important in terms of your baby's brain development. Um, so uh, we mostly get our, the, the best form of iron is from red meat. So it's important to include that in your baby's diet about three to four times a week. Other really good sources of iron would be from eggs, from green vegetables, things like lentils and beans. Um, so try to in, in, involve these in your baby's diet as well. So your baby's natural iron, iron stores tend to run out out by the time they're about six months old so we do need to include include it in the diet uh, we definitely had a couple of questions in as well about um cows and protein allergy so um i'll just touch briefly on this and just to say that there are two types of cows and protein allergy um, an immediate cows and protein allergy or a delayed reaction cows and protein allergy so you should have been told which one your baby had when your baby was diagnosed so if your baby has a diagnosis of an immediate cows and protein allergy they should be referred to the services of especially uh, a specialist um a specialist allergist um, and they will guide uh, your baby's reintroduction of cow's milk okay if your baby has a diagnosis of um, a delayed cow's milk protein allergy then they uh, should be referred to a dietitian 
for uh, advice on reintroduction of cow's milk into the diet. So this can be done by your public health nurse or your GP. Um, we had a question in about as well about suitable drinks for your baby. So um, the most important thing for your baby is uh, the most uh, suitable drink for your baby. Sorry, is uh, formula, breast milk, or water. So your baby doesn't need uh, any other drinks apart from that. Uh, fruit juice is not recommended because it's bad for your baby's teeth because there's sugar. If you really do have to give um, uh, fruit juice, then um, a really well diluted fruit juice, never in a bottle, always in a cup, and we always give it at meal times. You can start to care for your baby's teeth um, as soon as they appear. So um, a, a small toothbrush, a soft toothbrush with just water, or you can buy lots of things online, little finger toothbrushes, or um, just even some damp muslin um, on your finger. Um, always with just water. They don't need toothpaste until your baby's about two years old. Um, uh, just in terms of um, protecting your baby's teeth, um, it's just important to get them off the bottle by about one year old, bottles and soothers, to get them onto a, a just an open cup from two years old. Um, or sorry from one year old um, often teething can uh, kind of upset your baby at this stage so um, little teeth can start to appear they can be teething for months before a tooth actually um, erupts um, some little teething rings cool teething rings in the fridge or sometimes chewing on a cold piece of uh, fruit is, it can be soothing for your baby and sometimes they can be quite distressed with it so sometimes a mild uh, sugar free um, painkiller might be needed particularly if it's interrupting their sleep we had a question in about when to bring your baby to the dentist and um, you can bring your baby to the dentist from any age as soon as their first tooth appears. And that might sound a bit early, but it's always a good idea to get your baby into the habit of uh, having regular dental checks. Sleep is a topic that I get asked about a lot about at the nine month check. So at nine months old, your baby um, should be sleeping about 10 to 11 hours at night time. And they'll generally have two naps during the day, which will total about uh, two to three hours um, for the two naps. Not all babies are sleeping through the night at this stage. And um, that's quite normal still. Uh, a good bedtime routine is a good idea to, to get into. Um, and uh, so some tips for doing that can be winding down about an hour before bed, turning off the TV, no really stimulating play at this stage um, feed your baby about a half an hour before they they go sleep because they avoid um, associating sleep with feeding then at that stage um, and a bath and a story can be a really nice way to wind down Child safety is a really important topic to speak about at this age as well. Um, your baby's on the move, uh, so you're definitely going to have to do an element of childproofing on your home. So cupboard safety locks, um, socket guards, fire guards, brackets to fix your TV and some heavy furniture to the wall are really good ideas around now as well. We don't recommend baby walkers um, from a safety point of view because um, if your baby is flying around on a walker they're at a perfect height to maybe pull down cups of coffee on top of themselves from a coffee table or sometimes if they, they can reach the cooker so we don't recommend those. Also they can encourage your baby to walk on their toes and this is a stage where we really want your baby down on the floor uh, learning to crawl. Um, so just also to maybe lock away cleaning products and medicines a well stocked first aid kit is a really good idea to have and just make sure that your smoke alarms and carbon monoxide alarms are working as well um, at the nine month developmental assess your public health nurse will um, do a, a weight and a height on your baby and they'll plot them on a send child chart obviously we're not able to do that at the moment so um, as long as your baby is growing um, steadily their weight they're gaining weight steadily and they're wearing age appropriate clothes this is a good sign that they are growing well um, in terms then of vaccines is another thing to talk about so at this stage your baby will have had their two four and uh, six month vaccines and uh, their 12 and um, 13 month vaccines are going to be the last two and um, so um, a lot of parents are actually asking about the resumption of public health nurse and um, developmental checks and you know while we'd love to be doing these developmental checks with you at the minute and um, the safety of parents babies guardians and HSE staff has to be paramount um, in terms of reducing and the risk of the spread of COVID um, and any decision on the resumption of services will be made by um, local, regional and national guidelines. Um, thanks very much for listening. I hope I've managed to answer all of your questions today. Um, if you do have any questions, again, you can always contact your public health nurse. I think the library are going to put up a list of resources, some of which I've mentioned today, so you can have a look at that. Um, and thanks very much. And we're looking forward to seeing you and your babies back in the clinics really soon.